Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Star Trek Frontiers and before we get started let me welcome yet another patron on my channel Will. Thanks so much for your support and if my memory serves me right I asked him already I believe he's the great guy who came up with an awesome or amazing solo variant for Great Western Trail, which I also showcased on my channel, by the way. And I also met him as a really, really kind guy. And yeah, really appreciate your support. With that being said, I believe there weren't any major goofs. So we can move into the next round by choosing our tactics card. Again, I will go first and... I will go with a secret plot here. All the others are kind of meh. Not bad. This one would be cool if I would have drawn a damage card, but I luckily don't have any damage so far. So yeah, let's let's go with a secret plot here. I think that's fair. So I do not really care too much which... I had a die here. Which of the other ones the AI player will go. Let, let me put them in the right order here. So one, two... Three, four, five, six, one, two. So he will go with ambition. So Le Champetour will go first this round. Those cards will be still available. Do not really care too much. And yeah, let's get into the game. Okie dokie, three cards. One, two, and three. This time we were lucky that's a red card, but no red tokens. So those on patrol take it a little bit slower this day. I think I like that. Of course, I still get to choose one of those die. I can use it, put it on this card and any of your turn. We will not re-roll it. So I think hmm, it's either this or that because I do have a blue crystal. I can generate yet another blue crystal. So I think, yeah, I don't have any yellow. So let's go with yellow. Not sure if I really need it, but anyway, we will grab it. And that's our hand of cards. Again, we start with the improvise. Again, we have the long range attack. It really reminds me of the first turn of the last day. So yeah, we have to make a plan now. I have to do that. Overall, that's a tasty fella here. So, huh, I'm not sure if I would be able to take him out. Still, I need to explore. I really need to continue to explore in order to find my goal. I have four days in the solo game. So right now we are still okay, I would say. Um, but anyway, taking this one out is, I think, not too problematic. Apparently, this is bad. Um, I really have to come up with a lot of shields unless I am willing to take some damage. But I should be able to come up with five long range attack actually. So maybe we still want to do it. We might lose some reputation, but that's not the worst thing in the world, I guess. So yeah, I think that's really tempting actually. Because overall, we have a long range attack three here. And we have Donatra who also provides us with a long range attack too. Could take those suckers out right off the bat. And yes, let's definitely do that. So I will, sp oh no, we have a red, why should I do that now? No, we have a red die. No, I think that's better. We will spend this die from the sore, from the core. I think it's the core, right? The core, yeah, I think so. To play, engage, engage. And yeah, we'll power the more powerful effect down here. We will also use Donatra really early, but really makes sense now. So in total, we have now a long range attack of five. But this also means we are not moving this round, which is okay. Or this turn, which is okay. We will simply attack those guys. We will go first with a long range attack phase. They only have a resistance to photon torpedoes, I believe. We have not used any photon torpedoes. So those guys are out of here before they can do any damage to us. So we will gain five experience. This star base is no more. One, two, three three, four, and five are oh, awfully close. We will lose one reputation. They still don't like me destroying those. Was this the right one? Yeah, it was the right token. No, that was, no, 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 not so fast. This was not a Roman Starburst. This was a Dominion Starbase, actually. While undefeated can be, so minus one is the same. If successfully exalted market with a faction dog, move on to it and gain one undiscovered card of as your reward at the end of my turn. Well, that's definitely nice. So let's move on there. That's a forced move. I cannot opt against that. We will mark it with my token, I believe, right? Mark it with faction token, yes can score us some points at the end of the game, but 
yet again, I'm not really keen on that. And we are now getting a reward. Any ship can recruit crew members with the Dominion Starbase icon here and buy undiscovered cards. The undiscovered cards can be bought for seven diplomacy plus one plaque data. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. While defeated, but any ship can do that. But I'm playing alone, so it doesn't really matter. And quite frankly, I think I will go with the Q card here. Let's have a closer look. So first of all, we get Diplomacy 4. It's never a bad thing. We need to power those undiscovered cards. As your action for the turn, you may use your Diplomacy to interact with any outpost as if your ship was currently at that location. That's pretty nice. And then we have the Q Continuum. That's a Diplomacy 8, but we need it to power with a red and a black die. As your action for the turn, you may use your Diplomacy to act with any conquered Dominion or Romulan starburst, including an opponent starbase or any class M planet, as if your ship was currently at that location. So I can hire stuff, I can heal my my crew, whatever it is. So that's pretty, pretty nice. A Q is really a star. So yeah, let's totally go for him. And yet again, we will not forget that we can grab him right off the bat. We get a replacement card for the... What was it? Undiscovered card. And here we have Restoration. Heal 4 is also nice. Ah, that's all nice cards. Okay, that's pretty much the end of my turn. So the last thing to do is to reroll that die here. Okay, that's another blue. And we will draw another card, which who was surprised? It's Q. And then, yeah, let's move over to Lursar and Bitor. One, two, and Three, that's the yellow, so we will draw two cards now on top of this. Uh, yeah, but no real surprise. They're really fast now. And then, yeah, back to us. Okay, we need to move. It's really tasty, but we have to move. We really have to continue moving. And we'll get our experience point anyway. So I think overall, if we explore here, I think we are still okay. So we will play full speed ahead. We will power it with a wild card here which gives us four movement points. So we will move one space, that's two points, and then we will basically explore here. And that's now card or token tile number five. Let's see, and that's that. And I believe here we have our first class M planet. Very nice, but yet again, we have a rampaging Romulan warbird here. That's a pretty easy one, so hmm could be tempting moving there. I cannot move through the sun, apparently. But I could move in here in order to grab. And that's also might not be our best bet. So if we can come up with um, four more movement points, we are in a good position. So we can peek under this Romulan starbase here. And we can also explore here. And then maybe by a flyby or drive-by shooting, get rid of that Romulan warbird over there. But I don't have any real movement points. That's really kind of a bummer. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, a movement now comes up. Ah, that's crap, that's really crap. But maybe let's have a quick look at the Class M planet. We can do all kinds of nasty stuff here. We can recruit, we can repair, we can train, we can decimate. Ooh, decimate sounds good, but that's really something that doesn't feel right in this game. Yes, you're losing three reputation naturally, but still, Picard shouldn't be allowed to do that. Really not. This is what I like about Ascendancy better, because there are these rules. So as a Federation player, you cannot simply take over another planet by military force, unless it's uh, yeah, basically, yeah, you cannot do that. <laughs> that's really one of the things that's feeling a little, that's a thematic problem here. Um, Decimate is nice. In Animation Night, you should totally do these kind of things. I think it's the monastery or so that you are getting rid of with this class M planet. That's the, yeah, more or less the same thing there. And the good thing is when a class M planet is revealed, put the top card of the advanced action deck face up to the crew offer. I think that's definitely not a terrible thing. So let's see what we get. Compassion, heal two, turn one data crystal in your inventory into two data tokens of the same color. Could be helpful, especially because I can generate a lot of blue cubes there. Nice, and heal five even if I go for the more powerful. And gain plus to reputation at the end of your turn. Also nice, so you can 
really decimate and then oh let's let's be a little bit compassionate and we will get the most of it back nice then something i keep forgetting of course i could still explore here because here the universe still expands so that's allowed i have to move the whole galaxy down a little bit because i'm coming closer to my card holder here but two movement points could also help me there but i still kind of like the idea of i don't know dealing with this one here and then maybe see what's below those and maybe continue exploring that way of course i could always play cards sideways and i could also go for the improvise here but improvise yeah gives me a move three if i discard yet another card and right now maybe research might not be our most important so we could in theory simply play those two cards sideways because otherwise we only get a move three i really want to move four but no, I think we will continue to explore here. So I will simply play those two cards sideways. That's another move two, apparently. Sorry for the glare. I had to sleeve those cards. So we will explore this space. What do we get? I think that's this direction. Okay, we have another Dominion Starbase, another Romulan Starbase. And that's a class L or K planet or H planet. Oh, that's really terrible. I think it's a class H planet. This is really bad. <laughs> I mean, there is a circle. Almost reminds me like my favorite game. Um, ah, whatever. Yeah, I think that's a class H planet, if I'm not wrong. Actually, I think it's a class K planet. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a class K planet. That's one of those tokens here. While undefeated, if your ship is adjacent to a class K planet, you can beam down and evade him as your action for the turn. Very nice. The problem is, how should we get there? I cannot... No, I cannot move this. It's pretty much a black hole. It's not a nebula. What are you talking about? I think that's a black hole. And only then we will draw a class K token. Keep in mind, we still have Navak with us, who provides us a Diplomacy 4 doing away mission, which is not bad. And we have yet another Diplomacy 4 here and yet another Diplomacy 2 here. Problem is, again, we can't get there. So in theory, we would either move around here, but that's really a waste. Or we really move yeah, to one of those next turn. I am out of any move cards now and I want to hold on to my Diplomacy, apparently. So I have to take out one of those guys here and then make my way through. I think that's what I need to do. But again, I have no move whatsoever. Really a very bad hand again. It's so terrible. But that's what it is. We still get two experience points for exploring. One and two, which also means we get to level up at the end of our turn. And I think think we will call it an end of our uh, end of turn because there's really nothing I can do adjacent. I really don't want to move any further and burn through my cards. That's really not a good deal. In this case, it's very simple. Yet again, we will go for another um, advanced offer. But we first of all, we get another skill token. So yet again, we know the drill. We will draw two from us. We will draw one for the um, AI player. We could still go for one of the things that is in the common offer, but I think uh, we don't really need that. This is nice. We need a black token for our undiscovered card. If that would have been any other color, I would go for it. But another blue one, I don't think that I really need that and yeah so okay what do we have here this is a very nice one that's leadership once per turn when activating a crew member at plus three to its shields plus to its attack or plus one to its long range attack it's a very nice token problem is mm, i could use it for nevac still because he gives me plus two so i could make it a plus five no plus um, basically attack four but ah, that's really not the greatest thing in the world this is 
could be very nice. This gives me a move one for each ready unwound crew member I have. And I have two. Right now I already have one is exhausted, but it could still give me one move. I think that's once per turn. I think that's the efficient crew once per turn. I think let's go for this because this gives me an ongoing effect. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's nice. That was our skill upgrade. Let's look at the advanced command cards because I have chosen one of my own. I can go for any of those. And I think, yeah, we will want to go with the flexibility. Yeah, because it can power it with blue. I get a lot of blue, so this is pretty powerful. Yeah, let's go for this. We put it on top of our deck. This will slide down. We will bring out yet another one. Experimental defenses, pulse torpedo shields. Okay, that's also tasty. And that's the end of the round. Let's reroll the die. That's another white. I take that. Let's redraw our hand of cards. So let's see what we get. Ooh, surprise. Flexibility. This could really come in handy now. Yeah, this could come in handy. Ah, another diplomacy, which we don't need right now. I have so much attack now and nothing to do with that. Ooh, attack four, yeah, that's kind of nice. Ah, but I need the move. Uh, I need the move here, but then... Oh, man, I hate this game. <laughs> I really do. But anyway, that's the end of our turn. So yet again, we will draw one, two, oops, and three cards. Yes, they have a blue crystal. So let's reveal a new one. And yeah... The round is almost over, I fear. But now I must not forget that I have this token. So in theory, I need one more movement point here because keep in mind, we still have one ready crew member. So that's one movement point. We need one more, which we could place sideways. And I guess, hmm, I guess I will play intimidate now sideways. So that's two movement points, which is enough to move me here. If something terribly happens here, I will cancel my plan and will go somewhere else. But at least I get to peek under those. Okay, those are not terrible, but also not great. And yeah, those are terrible because they have a resistance to photon torpedoes, I believe, and phasers. So getting rid of those is definitely challenging. And yeah, we also, I think they're not doing a lot of damage, but yeah, it, they are, it's hard to block. So poof. in theory, our goal should be to take out those guys here, at least I guess. And then we can act. The problem is, or the idea was to go after this Romulans. They have disruptors, apparently. So whatever shields we are doing, normal shields we are coming up with, it's only halved. I think I should be fine anyway. So I will still power up this flexibility. I will take one die from the source. From the source or from the core? I think it's the core here and the source in the night. Sorry for all those references. But that's now shields four. Our shields are ineffective against those. So in theory, we needed shield eight in order to block it. So we blocked two points out of that damage. That much is clear. So we still have to suck up two points worth of damage. The way how this works is we will take one card, one damage card, no matter what, and it goes to our hand. So yeah, it's clogging up our hand for good. Then we are checking our current command token. That shows us a defense. That's the valid defense if our captain is not injured, which he is not apparently. So this guy is now sucking up or basically taking three points worth of damage. We had two points of damage, minus three. So we are good. We are not taking any more. If there would have been now some leftover damage, then I would take another damage card and would do the same thing again. In this case, we are okay. So Enterprise is slightly damaged, but we should be able to deal with that. But we have survived this attack. Next. We have to come up with, I guess, four points worth of damage here. So the way how we can do this is with battle stations. And keep in mind, we have taken another yellow die or golden die from our secret plot here, which we can use basically anytime during my turn. 
and we'll place it here. We will not reroll this one, but this is enough to give us the attack four and enough to take out those Romulans, which also means so those guys are out of here. We are moving on to the station. Yet again, we will lose one reputation. It's a no-no. And we will get, wait a second, three more. One, two, and three three more experience points and those Romulans are out of here. So that was not too terrible. The good thing about those Romulan star bases, they give you a plus one when you are adjacent or on top of a Romulan star base, which you control to you. But you get this bonus for all the Romulan star bases you control. So right now it's only a one, but that's a nice change. So we will mark it here accordingly. Um, and yeah, in theory, we can also, yeah, I think we can hire some folks there if I recall that correctly, right? Yeah, you can recruit crew with Romulan Starbase icon on top of this. And we have Tomalak waiting for us here. And he's a pretty powerful dude. So move four is definitely not shabby. But I think that's the end of our turn. Again, we get a plus one to our hand size, which means we can draw up to six cards. No, I think that's not bad. So one inside. Mm, okay, maybe finally we need some move. Yeah, I think that's enough. Cool. So one to five, one more and engage long range attack. I don't think we need long range attack this or the next turn, but still not a bad draw, I would say. Okay, over to Lurser and Bitor. But before we do, we have to reroll that die. I put in the yellow die back here to the core because I used it, but I have to place it back without rerolling. That's a red. So we have a nice selection. Oh, I think that's really helpful. Okay, I guess let's do Lurser and Bitor's turn first. This could be over any. Oh, this could be. I need to speed up. Come on, please, please, please. No, it's blue. Okay, blue is fine. It's only one card. So they will give us at least some more um, air to breathe. That's good. So the next turn, they will still draw this card. And only after that one, um, um, or basically the turn afterwards, they will then declare end of round. So I can still do stuff because my deck is still pretty, oh, it's pretty heavy. I need to really speed up, guys. And in the meantime, I figured out that I messed up this one. I thought this was, was a six. No, it's a nine. And that's the reason why we are seeing a K planet. I was really waiting for, I think, an H planet, which should have been the next one. So I messed this up. I will not take it back because I have seen this. So yeah, we have some randomization. Isn't that nice? So we have to deal with the class K planet. So that's the deal. And again, the idea is really moving next here and we should be able to do that relatively easy. Hmm. Yeah, this now really depends on <laughs> how many dice do I need. But I have so many blue tokens. No, I think we will spend, we will go with explore. Yeah, let's do that. We will power it up with a blue die from the, oh, should we go with a source or should we spend, because I could go with another die. No, let's, Hmm. No, let's spend our token here, actually, with our skill token. So yet again, we get one crystal into our inventory and we get one token, which we can use. So I will place it here so that I will not forget it. So we have used this skill here. And I think I will use the blue crystal now. Seems kind of a waste, but I think that might be still the better deal. So I will spend this, so I have move four. I will also use my fission crew, I think, which gives me a move five. I need three movement points to move in here to this nebula, if I'm not mistaken. And then with the remaining two, I will yeah, explore into this direction here. And now we see yet another, <laughs> unfortunately, class K planet, but that's what it is. And we have a class M planet here. And yet again, another thing. Um, I believe I cannot move in here too. Okay, let's bring out another warbird. Okay, that's also a relatively easy one. Yeah, I think now I could still move on, for example, here, but I'm out of points, actually, movement points. And hmm, yeah, I have more move, actually, but 
I might want to hold on to this card right now. I think we get still some more turns. Yeah, let's not go too crazy. I think it's time to really go with an away team. The good thing about the rules is that they will show you the probability. So those are the tokens. So here we have diplomacy 8, 8, 9, 9, 10 and 10. So if I'm extremely unlucky, I don't get enough diplomacy. No, I think I should be good. I really hope I should be good. I think we can we can take the risk. Yeah, we will do an away team. Hooray. So finally, we can make this one. And I have no clue why they put in this token here. Um, I mean, if you cannot remember this, then <laughs> I'm booming down. Maybe there was still space on the punch boards. I don't know. Doesn't make sense to me at all. And yeah, we now get to draw one of those tokens here. Class K Planet. Again, sorry that I messed this up. So that's the one and we went with, I think that's okay. That's a middle one. I mean, middle difficulty of nine diplomacy we have to come up with. Um, if things go terribly wrong, then yeah, I could get hurt, but I think we should be good with our diplomacy. I think that was our plan after all. We had so many, so much diplomacy points. I think we should be good. Okay, then let's see who will join us. We will send our captain, that's for sure, and we will also go with Nivak. So these two will join me on my away team. Domatra unfortunately cannot, but I think she won't contribute anything to this mission here anyway. Then we go into the diplomacy phase, which now happens before the long range attack. So if I really totally fail with my diplomacy, I could still go with some long-range attack for example so i guess enterprise is shooting down from above but not really how you do stuff so overall i need to come up with eight points of diplomacy i will use nevac apparently kind of a waste i guess but still he gives us four diplomacy we need five more question now is do we want to go with Picard or should we want to use Q? I think we want to use Q now. We need to power Q with a red crystal. We have the red token here. So that's now diplomacy of eight in total. And then of course I could go with Picard, but that's really a waste because he could give us four diplomacy. And I guess we want to go with, yeah, let's, let's simply play inside here sideways overall that's nine diplomacy so yes we have taken over that planet or we have i don't know dealt with the inhabitants so we get five experience points for that and i cannot remember if i got this point here from exploring or not maybe not but i cannot really remember doesn't really matter too much this will level us up anyway so this token is out of here. On top of this, we get one, if you overcome mark the space with your faction token. Yes, let's not forget that. So someone could take it back, but we will not care too much about this, but we will get one undiscovered card for that as well. Very nice. And yeah, we might go with the restoration one, which gives us a heal four. You may spend any number of these heal points to repair instead. That's really amazing. Gives us another really very flexible card. Diplomacy three is nice. Diplomacy five is also nice. Mm, there's another class K planet waiting for us. Open negotiation could be also tempting. But one thing that I've noticed is that I'm here really in the back end. I cannot move through here. I, I can move. Oh, I can move over. No, that's allowed. I can move over it, but I cannot land on it. OK, that's still OK. So it's not a dead end. Only the sun and the asteroids in here, this black hole will. Yeah, no, I think then it's maybe fine because we still have here. Ah. That's tempting now. Yeah, I guess we might go with open negotiations now again. Or not again, but gives us yet again some more diplomacy points. But the heal four is also great. But yeah, I think that's... Yeah, why not? 
I not. I, I cheated with the setup of this board, so I have two Class K plants right next to each other. So I think moving there might make sense. So yeah, let's go with the open negotiation. It comes on top of the deck and then, oh, we haven't used any die from the source this round, but I think it's okay because it shows all colors, so we should be good there too. So this will slide down. Another card comes out. That system access, target enemy loses all resistance. Oh, wow. Oh, that's an amazing card. Oof. Really amazing. Yet again, it's the end of the round. We are still adjacent to our Romulan starbase here, which means we get yet another card this turn. So I think that's definitely not bad at all. All. So yeah, let's draw our cards. And we have still an awful lot in our deck. So yeah, there we know this one. Two, tag, and four. Yeah, okay, that's pretty amazing draw actually. So we can get rid of this damage here with this repair one. So I think it was a good idea not going after the system, or no, restoration card. So I think that's pretty good. Maybe we could be able to deal with the another class k planet awesome and maybe we shouldn't forget one two three four and five i believe yeah we have leveled up yet again which means we get yet another command token and our hand size is also increased now so what happens first i think we get another card now I think we are now at seven plus the one from the room. I think that's how it's supposed to be. I think it is. So we get yet another card and that's another move. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe we can do something much better with that. Cool. So Loser and Bitor, this will go fast. So that's their only card. So next turn, they will call end of round and then I still get yet another turn. So I think I should be good from a timing perspective. But question now is, should we move in here like we planned or should we move here? This could also be a possibility and then maybe send an away team or we could simply, I don't know, explore up there and see what comes out there. This could be also, ah, I think that might be even the better option. Okay, before we do anything, let's repair our ship. Repair one means we can remove one of those damage cards from our hand. It's only from our hand. I believe there are other, I think the Tridog allows you to remove from damage card from your hand or discard pile, right? But really repair points, this needs to come from our hand. So our ship is now fully functional again. That's pretty amazing. Then I want to generate a move four and we will power this with the remaining data crystal from our inventory. Yeah, let's do that. So we will get four movement points, two movement points. I will spend to explore this space. And that's still a standard tile, a basic tile, I believe. And here we have an outpost. We have yet another Romulan warbird, which we might have to take over. And that's now a class H planet. This is a different one yeah i think that's a different one because this there you really don't know what happens and this will tell you what you need to do for example we have to come up with some special tokens for example depicted you must fight all enemy tokens first afterwards you must send the vein team so this these are really a little bit more tricky so i'm not really sure if i want to go after this one the problem still is i cannot easily move there unless i'm willing to move or provoke that Romulan warbird, which is also not the worst thing in the world, don't get me wrong. But in theory, I could move in here and use some more diplomacy and yeah, maybe go after data. I could get data. So data could be come in handy if I would move in here. Oh, that's now a tricky one. But then again, there is this nice class K planet down here. There's a class H is really, this is a mixed bag. Anything can happen there. If I'm lucky, I have to simply discard three data tokens, crystals of whatever color, and then I can leave it be. If I'm really unlucky, I might have to draw two um, combat tokens, for example. I have to fight them <laughs> and really can take a lot of damage. I'm really not prepared doing that. 
on the other hand, really getting another crew member for the next round might not be our worst thing. And we could still fight these guys, getting some reputation back, getting some more experience, I think. And then we could still move on here. And maybe that's our, that's what we should do, huh? Yeah. So we have two more movement points. We'll move on to this. I think it's the outpost, right? Yeah. Then we can either interact now or we can fight those guys. And huh, that's tricky. That's not really tricky because I cannot do both, of course. And I have to stay here. Maybe I should move here. No, sorry. I will move here. I will go for the class K plant here. I think that's still the better deal. Yeah, let's do that. So that was our second move. So we had two movement points to explore. I think we will get yet another experience point. This time I will forget and not forget. And then we will send another away team. But this time I'm all by myself. Oh, this is also bad. And let me tell you why. We need two red in order to power up. Um, we get, I mean, this could be nine diplomacy points. We only have one red token, unfortunately. And yeah, there is no, yeah, I think that's, oof, with this, it's only a diplomacy two. So this could be diplomacy seven. With those two cards, we could make it to diplomacy nine. So we could now really get beaten up pretty badly but i guess we have to take some risks don't you think hmm so this could be terrible so we will beam down again so where is oh i think we have forgotten our transporter token here so only pika will beam down and then we will draw one doodly do one 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 class k planet right yeah that's a class k planet do when that's a nine i think we can Oh, barely deal with that. Oh, okay. If that would have been a 10, we would really be, this would be terrible. So we will use the open negotiation. We haven't used a die from the source or from the core. So we will power this one here. So that's a diplomacy five because of the away mission. Then we will play diplomacy two. That's um, seven points in total. We are not gaining this during an interaction. This doesn't count as an interaction. That's the bummer and yeah simple as that we have to play two cards sideways now to come up with diplomacy nine so yes we have defeated those guys here too pretty amazing that's five more points one two three four and five and we get yet another undiscovered card and I really want this system access here. Target enemy loses all resistance of this combat and long range attack too. I think that's pretty amazing. We put it on top of our deck. We draw another card. That's advanced range. Double all of... What? <laughs> amazing card. But that's the end of the round. We will still mark the space accordingly. So that's also ours. Cool stuff. We will reroll that die from the source that's yet another red one i take that let's draw our hand of cards we are at six now we are not oh we are still next to our romulan star base actually okay that's nice so we get all our cards um and that's i think we can immediately jump into our last round because the only thing that lurs and Bitor will do they will call it an end of the turn and yeah this is what we have to live with it we get one red data crystal to your inventory nice i think we will do that what happened to this card last round i think i used it for the long range attack instead right yeah i guess so i guess so okay so let's see what to make out of this but the thing is i really don't know how many uh, I need three movement points and then I need two movement points to explore this and then I need to move off of this space. But I think that's okay. We could still move in here. If we would la if we would have to land on that, let's say there was no other place to move to, then I would take some damage and have to move 
pretty much back from where I came from. So I think we should be able, we get still one movement point, right? Because of our, no, we don't. Okay, we are not getting this. No, this is out. We have used all our crew members. Oh, so we can power up this. This would give us a move four. Then we need one movement point more. <laughs> then we need still two more cards. So we could really, maybe, so that could be a move six, but okay. Let's power up this die here first. I think, yeah. So that's a move four and we need a move five. So let's simply play, hmm, no, we will play, no, we will play this card here first sideways. So that's a move five. So we move on top of this thing here. And yeah, then we can, with the remaining two points, explore here. So let's do That's our very first core tile. So let's end. Wow, I really, okay, wow. Yeah, that's the ball cube. <laughs> so the game is over. And yes, we cannot move on top of this Borg sphere here. I think we have to place it next to us. So we need, in order not to take any more damage, we need to, yeah, spend, okay, how much? So that's five. We need two more movement points now. Yeah, in order to move away now. And we cannot move on top of this. I need to check if I provoke this Borg sphere or not, because I could still move away from it now. And yes, it gets provoked and we will reveal it right away. Oh, wow. That's a nasty one. Um, <laughs> three damage. That's not terrible, but seven damage I need to do or 10 diplomacy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I can now, hmm, if I move in here with two movement points, I have to move away. I think there is no, yeah, and I don't get enough. Yeah, I really don't get enough damage. I, I have no chance taking those out. So that's kind of a bummer. So do I, I need to move back. Otherwise, I'm taking an awful lot of damage here. Oh, wow. But yeah, I have no chance. So I will have to play two cards sideways in order to come up with two more movement points. So I will move away from the Borg Sphere. That's allowed. I'm not provoking it this way. I have cannot land on this space, which means, yeah, scenario is now over because it's also the end of the round. Normally every other or every player gets yet another turn when this has been found. But in this case, yeah, we are not going to. So I was really able to find the ball cube uh, at the end of day two. Um, yeah, in theory, we had two more tiles that could have come up. So would have been very likely that we would have found it during day three. But yet again, it's really not a very challenging mission. It's really getting behind, or getting you behind the rules or on top of the rules and whatnot. So still a very, very, very enjoyable experience. I really do. I haven't messed things up. And please let me know if you do want me to continue basically going for a real scenario with my next video. Or if I should move on to another game. I will leave the game as it is. I have to reset anything, but I will leave all the components down here in my little basement studio and let you decide if you want me to continue playing in a new scenario apparently or not. It's really up to you. Again, thanks so much for all of your comments, all of your likes and subscribes, all you shout out to my patrons. Really appreciate your support there too. Hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye. <laughs>